Following the Brown decision, the Little Rock, Arkansas School Board developed a plan to integrate its public schools. Nine Negro students, who would become known as the Little Rock Nine, were scheduled to begin the 1957 school year at the previously all-white Little Rock Central High. Arkansas Governor Orville Faubus had publicly supported integration, but at the last minute, he changed his position. I have therefore in accordance with the solemn responsibilities and the oath of my office taken the following action. Units of the National Guard have been and are now being mobilized with the mission to maintain or restore the peace and good order of this community. Advanced units are already on duty on the grounds of Central High School. The campus was swarming with segregationist protesters on the first day of school. National Guardsmen were drawn up in formation to prevent any Negro students from entering the building. Elizabeth Eckford later recalled her terrifying experience. Somebody started yelling, lynch her, lynch her. I tried to see a friendly face. I looked into the face of an old woman and it seemed like a kind face. But when I looked at her again, she spat on me. Every day for the next three weeks, hundreds of sign-toting protesters stood vigil at the high school. But if these elements represented the entrenched prejudice of the past, some of Central High's white students symbolized hope for the future. Well now, what about this? Do you think that the trouble is with the students here in the high school and in the schools of Little Rock, or is it with the parents, or is it with outsiders, or where is the trouble? I think it's the parents. What do you think? Well, I think it was just downright un-American. I think it was the most terrible thing that has ever been seen in America. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm sounding patriotic or something like that, but I always thought that all men were created equal. Despite public cries for his intervention, President Eisenhower maintained that Little Rock's problems should be settled in the courts. Privately, he feared he would be forced to act. If I do, he told an aide, you can bet one thing. It will be quick, hard, and decisive. The issue was no longer segregation versus integration. It was a question of the supremacy of the United States government. Governor Faubus finally agreed to remove the National Guard troops. But that only fueled the violence. White mobs attacked members of the Negro press corps. One reporter, Alex Wilson of the Tri-State Defender, was brutally beaten and never recovered from his injuries. After weeks of patience, President Eisenhower was left with only one choice. Certain misguided persons, many of them imported into Little Rock by agitators, have insisted upon defying the law and have sought to bring it into disrepute. The orders of the court have thus been frustrated. The president federalized the Arkansas National Guard and ordered 1,200 army paratroopers into Little Rock. He made it clear that he was legally compelled to uphold the Supreme Court's directive. The very basis of our individual rights and freedoms rests upon the certainty that the president and the executive branch of government will support and ensure the carrying out of the decisions of the federal courts, even when necessary, with all the means at the president's command. Thus will be restored the image of America and of all its parts as one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Federal troops brought an abrupt end to the dissent, which had festered for nearly a month. With order restored, they escorted the Negro students to school. The crisis in Little Rock graphically underscored the hardening resolve of Jim Crow segregationists. If we're wrong, why don't you arrest us? As the civil rights movement swept across the South, place names like Birmingham, Neshoba County, and Selma 
would make Little Rock look like a beginner's course in racial violence.